Okay, so the insertion, update, delete, and truncate. <clears throat> These are part of the what's called the DML, uh, the data manipulation language, uh, which means is that you only update or you only manipulate data. You don't really change the structure of your database uh, table. Okay. Uh, next time we'll learn about the DDL, which is the data definition language. You actually change the definition of a table. You can you know remove. Uh, um, uh, change the, the structure, change the data type, uh, change the maybe the size, the length of a particular column. You can do that. Updating the schema. I'm sorry. Updating the schema. Yeah, schema. yeah, right. The schema, the structure of the table itself. Okay, that's the DDL part. So the DML, which is for manipulation only. We're changing only the data, the content only. We're not changing anything in the structure. Okay, so the most important one is, actually the more important, as the most common one is the insert one. It's only for inserting data to the table. But you can't really do any insertion, update, delete, all this stuff if you don't create a table. And of course, you have to have a database first, right? So um, I want to go over just the, the create, create a, um, a table, because that's also part of the assignment. Um, so make sure you know how to do that before you can go on. So <clears throat> create a table is basically it's very easy. And let me see here. So why don't we create a, a database first? Okay, why don't we do, <clears throat> if you are here, we can do it together. Um, create a database, we will call it, I also have it in note too, we can call it um, Yes, unit four. So you can go here and make a new query, I guess. Okay, so we're going to create a new a database called unit four. So create a database at unit four DB. Okay, you can do that. <clears throat> so we're going to add some tables into this database. And it doesn't matter what you select here, it doesn't matter where you're at. Uh, as long as you're in this connection, then it will create into this um, server. So go ahead and create that table, I mean that database. And then go to the database folder, click on that and refresh. So you can see it's there. Okay. <clears throat> so once that database created, <clears throat> you could select that from the drop down, so the unit 4 DB, and I want to, you'll make sure that you turn this command off because you don't run this again, so you can just comment it out. And let's create a table, and the table we're creating is uh, the one I have here. I have this already, you can just copy and paste if you want, but I think it's better if you just, you know, uh, type it manually so you, you get the hang of it. Is this table here, the sample table we did earlier, right? So instead of creating this entire employee's <coughs> table on um, sheet uh, three, <coughs> I have these three tables here. I want to create these first, and then we'll create that employee's table, which is a longer one. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and create um, the department table? So the, the department table has only two fields the uh, ID and the name. Okay, so the ID will be of type. I will leave it as type integer is fine for, for now. And then the name will be um, var char of, I would just say, maybe size 50. Okay. So <clears throat> to create a, a database a table, you use the word create table, just like create database, but now it's table. And then you give it a name, kind of follow the same uh, syntax up there. So the table will be. Uh, department okay and <clears throat> then after that name you would put a pair of parentheses and you terminate that with a semicolon again semicolon is optional but um, use that for good practice just make sure you're on the unit 4 DB otherwise you would add that to a different uh, database you may not find it so <coughs> And you can also wrap this with the square brackets if you want, that's fine, but it's, again, it's optional. 
So the first field is um, you want to create is called DEPT ID, right? And this is the unique ID that will track this table. So this will be our primary key. Okay. <coughs> um, and then we, we want this to be the size. So the name of the column, let me put that here. Put it and put the comma here. This is the uh, column name followed by the data type. Okay. And then <coughs> you could include a include a size if you want. That's also optional. Uh, size. And then um, if it's primary or no, not no, right? No. Let's say not no or no or primary key. And several others, but depending on what, what column it is. Okay? So basically it's just the name and the type. The rest could be optional. Okay, so we have a name, <coughs> department ID, and the type will be just int. And we want this to be the primary key, so you put a space and we'll just say this is also your uh, primary key. The main key that is used to index uh, this department. And <coughs> when we add a new department, you could have it so that it automatically add this ID for us, or you can manually type it in, right? So let's just say they want this to automate for us. Every time we add a new department, the uh, database will generate a new ID for us. So to do that, we just add another um, parameter here called identity. Okay, identity will um, it's again this is a, um, a tsql command. And if you use Oracle, it will be different. If you're using MySQL, it will be different. Uh, if you're using um, uh, a different a database, has their own way of incrementing the ID here, but in SQL Server, they use identity. And it takes two parameters here. This is also optional. You don't have to specify. If you don't specify, it will take the value of one, that one comma one. Okay, so the, the one, <coughs> the first number here is what's called the seed value. What number should this uh, table start? Okay, only once the initial, when you first add the first uh, record into the uh, table, it will start at that number. So by default, it's always one comma one. So the second number is the increment. How how many numbers should I jump after this number? Just so if you remember in um, the loop in Visual Basic, right? Step one or step two. So it will start at one, and it will increment uh, by one every time you add a new data to it. So you can change that size to, let's just say, you know what, I want to start at one, but I want to increment by two every time. So you can change that too if you want to do that way. It's not common, but you can. Uh, so you can leave it one one. You can leave it out. If you leave it out, then it will always be one one. Okay. So either way. So we could just put one comma one here, um, just so we know. And then the next field uh, <coughs> here, I I didn't pull no or not no because if it's a primary key, if you set that there as a primary key, then it has to be. It has to be not no by default. So you don't have to say uh, not no here. Not no means you cannot leave it uh, without any value, right? If you force it to be not no, I mean that field has to have some data. Okay? We'll deal about the constraints later on. So by default, you don't have to say that if you if it's a primary key. So put a comma here. Some people like it. I mean, I usually put a comma at the end. Some people prefer to put that comma in the front, and then the next field goes right here. Okay, you see some people do that. I don't know uh, why, but they, they do that. I think also when you um, extract data from the um, SQL Server, it also does that too. So for example, let me show you really quick here. Uh, so in the table here, if I do here, do right click and script as create, you'll see that it, it uses that. Well, not well, not this one, I'm surprised. I saw earlier it used differently. Yeah. Anyway, so that's just optional. That's how you want to use it. So the second is um, name, right? You call it name. And this name here will be um, var char of size 50. So you put var char size 50. The name? Um, no, you don't have to. Yeah, you can. You have to. Because I, I don't think is name a keyword. 
if it's a keyword that you use it, then yeah, like like for example, table. If I if I do this, because table is a keyword, it will tell you. If yeah, I, I think it's a it's not a keyword they use elsewhere, but it's not a keyword inside the SQL Server, so that it's fine. Okay. But if you if you use table, that's a it's a SQL keyword, then yeah, in that case you can wrap it with the um, square brackets if you want to use that. But otherwise, I think name yeah name should be fine. Um. <coughs> and I think that's it for this one, right? Just two fields. Okay, we're done with this. So you can go ahead and then highlight that and then uh, run it. If there's no red text, then you're good. It will say successfully created. Then we move on to the next table. Our next table is the pay type. So pay type, pay ID, and then the uh, code will be just character of two, right? Assuming we use those. So again, we'll say create uh, table pay type and then the paren I mean here we have the um, pay ID and then it will be which we'll is int again <coughs> this also be the primary key and also identity okay and the, your, your primary key is usually a convention usually you have you can use the table name plus the ID name plus the word ID. It's, it's pretty common. Uh, here I, I use the depth only, it's understood, but usually we say department ID, pay type ID, and so on. So it's easy to identify. Okay, but something related uh, should be okay. Instead of just ID, you want to say the table name and then the ID. And then the second field is um, the code. Uh, this is, it just takes two characters, right? So we can say, we can use the char, <coughs> and a uh, char of two sides, just two characters. So you don't use a, you don't use raw char, you say char. That means that you have to use, if you don't use two characters, you use only one, which is fine, <coughs> but it will consume two bytes, <coughs> or two, two uh, sides anyway. So um, that's the difference between char and raw char. So go ahead and then create a table, run that. It should, um, should run without any problem. We're not creating any constraints, so no foreign keys here. We'll do that later on. And then create a third table, which is the position, again, int, and then raw chart of, I'll just say maybe this is short for 25 maybe. So create table, uh, position, uh, P P O S I D. Yes. Uh, int, same thing. Primary key identity, and we want the name to be same. Right, raw char. Variable character of size twenty five should be enough to hold those um position. Oh, I mistyped primary. Okay, so. Run that. We created our third table. And then finally, let's create our employee table, which is the long one here in the second sheet number two. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fields. We're going to skip the description here. We're not going to do that. Just up to the pay ID. Uh, so we have employee ID, first name, last name, um, the age. Instead of age, um, I'll, we'll, we'll change that to a date of birth. Okay, so it'll be, it'll be our type date instead of the age. Uh, because this age, the reason why I don't use age is later on when we learn about building da database tables, this number can be calculated from the uh, date of birth, right? You can just subtract the current date from the uh, date of birth and you get the age. So that way, it's not really uh, useful to put a number here for age. Anything that, anything that can be calculated should not be stored in the database. Okay? You can get those from some type of calculation. Like if you have the average, uh, average total, you don't want to put that here because you can do the 
average function to get that for you. Okay, so <coughs> can create um, table employees. Uh, also, I want to say that um, be very careful when you create your columns. Once you create it, you cannot change it. I mean, I mean the order of it. Okay, order does not matter though. It doesn't matter how you put your order uh, the way it is. But once you created it, you run it, you create it, it's permanent. You cannot go back and say, oh, you know what, I want to move name to the top of the ID, right? You can't do that. It's, it's just the way it is. If you want to do that, you have to pretty much destroy it and recreate a new table all over. So um, if that's important, then you want to uh, be careful when you um, create your table. All right, so we have the um, employee ID. This would be int as well. Uh, just like before, primary key, uh, identity. <coughs> the next is the uh, first name. So you can say um, first first name. This will be varchar uh, of type varchar. I should say 25. Should be enough characters. I don't know if anybody can be that long. I know there's some some. Um, I think Vietnamese or Laotian names can be that long, I'm pretty sure, but I think 25 should be enough. And then the last name will be probably the same, <coughs> although it could be longer if you want, but I think 25 should be enough for this example. And then we have, um, I said instead of the age, we're going to call it date. Okay, so the date of birth, we said D-O-B here, and the data type will be just date. <coughs> And then we have the department ID, position ID, and the pay ID, right? Those are related to the other three tables we created, right? So really when you create this, this should be like the um, foreign key. But for now, we're not going to do that. So the dip, dip ID, the pay ID, and then we have the uh, position ID. Again, notice how I put the same name for these columns as we did with the other tables up here, right? The post ID, pay ID, and then the depth ID. <coughs> so they are related when we see them. So when we do any, um, you know, joins, you can join based on those IDs, okay? Because the, the depth ID is not going to match with the employee ID, right? So. Okay, uh, let's see. So if you don't put anything else, that means that this will all be um, null by default. Okay, that means that you can have empty columns and em empty records in that field. If you force it so that our date cannot be null, a person must have a, a, a first name. So you can say cannot be null, right? You force that to be there. You cannot have, you, have, you must have a last name too. So that cannot be null, cannot be empty and also must have a date of birth. So you cannot be known if you put that there. So if you leave it out, it will throw an error at you. You have to force it to be in there. But they don't have to be in a department. You can have an employee that doesn't, have, doesn't belong, to, uh, belong to the department yet, doesn't have a pay code yet maybe. Or if you say, oh, you must have it, then you can also force that in here. Um, and then the position also, maybe that doesn't have a position yet. You can change that later on, right? So let's just say we have those three restrictions for these three fields, and then Go ahead and create a table. And if you created earlier, you forgot to put not null and you um, forgot to add that in there, you just basically, uh, you can just <coughs> delete the database table employees and then we create another one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, so are we good? So now, if you go back and look at your um, database object under the unit 4DB, you should have four tables in here. <coughs> if you don't see it, just click on the tables folder and do the um, refresh. You should see those four tables there. <coughs>